Hey guys, this is Brandon with Amda Studio, and today I'll be talking about how to pass the project development documentation exam, part of NCARB's Architects Registration Examination, which is part of the series of exams, as well as requirements for becoming a licensed architect in the U.S. Every state has their own requirements uh, in addition to this, but this is a universal requirement. And uh, what I've done is I've actually created a video that sort of goes through my entire experience, but I haven't yet broken that down into particular um, step by step as you know there's a lot of great resources out there I currently do uh, little part-time uh, exams uh, study but I also do a lot of tutorials in different software and design methods um, so this exam though however is obviously really hard and so I think it's something that people are looking for so I'm glad to provide some help um, so I'll go back to my original article where I was writing at all the things I did to take for each exam and if I go back to sort of the middle of my exams uh, pretty much in like the middle of them where I had three exams to go uh, CE construction evaluation PPD project planning design and then project uh, development and documentation pretty much at that point uh, I had actually failed uh, one test that was called easy construction and evaluation um, and I had also uh, failed a PPD and the thing is I really came to architecture uh, testing after like years out of school and a lot of theory even though I was working as uh, in architecture firms and so I had to really get that basis of hey what is going on with architecture and so I took uh, when I started out you know I had one test source ARE prep and I thought that was great but I definitely knew I needed to get more so I was like uh, looking at some of the ballast books but I really didn't learn that way um, because like I was like hey man I have I, I went out went through the process of buying actual books paying hundreds of dollars for these books and it's like there's no way I'm gonna get through these in time you know um, like the meat book mechanical and electrical equipment for buildings it's like you know wow I, I went through the ARE 50 community uh, joined the ARE study group on uh, Facebook you know I was doing like a lot of the YouTubes but like I knew that wasn't enough so I plunged into Amber book and the middle of my exam testing um, and I was really experimental in passing PPD uh, however C I need I knew I needed to push a little bit further um, and uh, what I did is I actually scheduled PDD um, and I took a PDD um, with online proctoring and that actually uh, was also a fail that I, I don't know if I really consider that a fail because the exam crashed a few times but at the same time I was not yet ready okay so uh, CE was really uh, helped by both taking and going through Amber book as well as the you know the ARE uh, or pretty much AA has a exam Archie prep series and uh, that was actually really helpful because it definitely goes to a lot of the fire protection and essentially CE is talking you know about construction methods you'll need to know the CSI and specifications you know you know that if someone's going to do concrete they will need to be specifying in their project manual for wood and they'll be needing to specify you know steel for rebar you know that sort of insight into oh it's not just concrete specification was really important for CE okay that all to say that's where I'm getting to for where did I land for PDD and right around the time of failing um, is it was a fail it was an unconfident fail like it wasn't like a fail I knew I got all the answers it was like a fail and hey wait what's going on there's like some stuff missing like I actually actually bought Chang's uh, design uh, and I'll look at the exact name for this um, I went to Amazon and bought the uh, the uh, project development documentation series by Gang Chen. I was recommended to do that, and I thought that was great. But it actually got like an 85-ish, and it said if you don't get 85, you're not gonna pass. And I was like, if you get over 85, so it would pass. So it was like really irked me, like maybe I won't pass. Like I did Amber Book, I did Gang Chen. Um, so like after that fell, like I. And it was like I, I went to customer service because it had crashed a couple times. And I, I didn't even like finish the exam for like five to ten minutes. But that doesn't matter. The idea is I was not super confident. 
And one of the things I definitely notice about it is um, PDD, and if you've taken it, you've, you find out that PDD doesn't just act like, you know, here's the thing for this exam, uh, especially your case studies. It goes like in, like you have like, you really have to budget a, a certain amount of time. You have to be boom, 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 boom. Like it's not like I knew the answer. It's like I have to calculate. I have to calculate based on looking at this. Uh, and I won't give away any like, particulars of the answer, but I'll, you know, in generals, like you have to calculate um, different things about how that construction assembly is going to be done. You know, like it's going to be definitely acting with the specification divisions. It's definitely going to be saying, you know, can you put two and two together about how does that package fit together? Okay, so in terms of resources for PDD, um, here's where I started to add on to my list. Um, in addition to Archiprec, I also went to ARE questions. And one of the great things about ARE questions is that it goes to the IBC and the footnotes. So, you know, when you're looking for like um, maybe how to deal with a mezzanine space, you know, there's a, there's a footnote on, you know, calculating that capacity. You know, there's a certain amount and pretty much you need to know your way around the IBC. IBC in general is incredibly important, but knowing your way around it will make the difference between wasting time at a case study. Uh, you know, because I, I, I'm going through occupancy, I'm going through uh, fire protection, you know, like I'm, I'm going through these things and like, like I pretty much made a listing of all the different sections. So I would not be there and not knowing. So like I know how to get through the IBC uh, almost by memory. And so like when I'm, even though I think it's, it started to be a lot faster for the last PDD, when I was doing it, um, before, like there was like a, it was sort of slow loading PDFs, um, but it got a little faster. But at the same time, I studied to know exactly where things are, you know, um, and also definitely being able to navigate around uh, different fire protection assemblies that was really important. Uh, so um, let me go over some of the things that I've listed that I studied before PDD, and this is going to be a link in the uh, description that you can look at. Um, Pluralsight is something I did. Pluralsight actually has. Um, like you sort of, he talks about several exams. But I definitely went to PPD and PDD because those are so related. Uh, CE is also super related to that. But uh, the Pluralsight, <laughs> uh, it tries to charge you. Um, if you had to pay for like a month, do it. The thing is, you want, think about how much you'll pay for another exam. So uh, there was a free month, and I totally used that up. Um, and that really, you know, great, great course you know it's a sort of strange interface but the idea is he includes like some resources about it and it's just really like watching a video and you just practicing along with it so um, that was really useful I did uh, ARE questions uh, that's a great size because like I said she went through the footnotes so like she has like these these like uh, over a hundred questions for PDD and PPD though I've had other sources like ARE hacks four questions, the idea is there, there's a certain depth that they don't go into that, you know, might be fine for maybe helping with P, PPD, but for PDD, you really need to be searching and knowing how to get through the chapters of the IBC to understand what's going on. And, um, and then uh, the Gang Chin talked a lot about wind and uh, structures, uh, and that's important, but, uh, you know, I definitely saw uh, specifications being very important for my particular exam. Um, and, uh, I definitely want to get the, the other resources because I know Archiprep was, Archiprep talked a lot about breaking down into, uh, fire protection and knowing particular things about, um, how that, uh, system is going to be treated, knowing building types. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll put the list of books I had because it's, it's on the side. Like I, I got, uh, you know, construction, building construction illustrated. Uh, I got um, building code illustrated. And I just scammed a lot, scanned a lot of these books. And um, the idea is like going through that and that. Uh, mind you, uh, I was not just a book nerd. Like, like reading was really sort of like, I was like, what am I doing just reading? Um, <laughs> but I would like read while on the bicycle or... Um, uh, play like I, I even started recording you know or playing you know 
text to speech from different websites that were useful while I was driving home and back. I created a few courses. In the meantime, I was actually um, planning a little bit of a, my wedding uh, actually around this time. So I'm not going to say that uh, I was just like boom, 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 uh, studying, studying, studying. But I, I will say, you know, th th there's like things that you would focus on. Like that ability to, under the, under the pressure, just really be knowing that navigation of the IBC is, is really critical. Again, I think if you go through airy questions, you'll, you'll get the context of what I'm talking about in terms of like, you know, time yourself. Uh, go through it. Uh, I, one, one resource was saying you should be doing full practice exams every day. And I was doing them every other day or every three days. And definitely that helped because I did. I was setting myself up for the pressure to deal with that because, yes, you fail because, um, you know, the idea is like you have the knowledge, but you have to apply it uh, very quickly. Uh, and essentially, I had to brush past things in the um, exam because I was like saying, you know, it's only one to two minutes per multiple choice. And when I get to these case studies, I need a lot, lot of time. Even I did this. You cannot go through and change your answers. So I would use the first case study question. I would get to that and I would go through all the resources and I will leave the rest answer when I came back from my, um, you know, my break. And also I pretty much, I, I did a segment of multiple choice before going to the case study. So that's a little bit of course, uh, exam, um, practice method, you know, um, I've been taking the, f the full exam, um, practice uh, in carb offers now in carb offers a full practice exam it's I think it's I don't know if it's out yet but it's going to be for each uh, division but never nevertheless I did it for the whole exam and getting comfortable with you know this whiteboard and no paper uh, PSI I've heard is not really changing any of the fundamentals it's just that there'll be more exams instead of um, what it was currently uh, going with Prometric so it, essentially like you research some of that look at their blog but I think, again, the particular content of this exam and the, the delivery of it is the thing that you need to just uh, make yourself comfortable with because ideas like when you get stressed, uh, your thoughts go um, to the, your, you know, like lizard brain. That's what some people say. You know, it's not, it's not as clear. And you really need a lot of clarity to answer these. And the idea is you're, you're stacking, uh, you know, logical answers up to answer. And so uh, essentially finishing is really important in terms of you need to look at like when you start on that case study, when you're doing a full of it, you need to get to the end of that because you can come back and check, you know, even for my multiple choice, I came back and I checked, but I definitely made sure not to assume that I knew everything because they're going to put certain questions that are either not graded or just, you know, this is super hard. If you waste your time on the things that are super hard, it's going to really get in the way of answering things that would be easier or things that you could calculate with just a little study. So um, at the end of the day, uh, I felt super confident when I was taking the PDD the second time. The first time I was confident, but I didn't have a lot of that backup with IBC navigation and such. For that final exam, which I took in May, <laughs> the first one I took like around February, that final PDD, like I was like, I'm going to destroy this exam. And it was correct. And the thing is, um, yes, I was, I was going through images and text. I used Quizlet. I was doing that every day. So I'm not going to, you know, undersell the amount of study I was doing. But the idea is I had one more exam. And the thing is, it was different from the other ones because it was, it was definitely a shocker after passing P PPD to fail at PDD. Um, so um, my final analysis for you, uh, as I've talked through different things about knowing the exam, uh, some of the resources I studied, um, so the mindset is essentially put it before you, break it down. I used a app for dealing with focusing. I deal. I use an app for you know outlining it out. Essentially, you have to be a little more organized uh, in some sort of way. And I, you know, what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and put a, a little bit of a listing of what I did and also some time for how that how long it took for me because I was like calculating how much time it was for that. My 10-month period of 
testing does make it incredibly uh, one way easier, like because I was studying similar things around the same time. However, the fact that you would fail after passing one tells you how much knowing XYZ is going to help your ABCs. I think that you really need to be focused for a particular every particular exam, taking them within the 30 days. Uh, that doesn't mean you're going to pass, um, even though people said take P, PD, PDD at the same time. That didn't technically work for me, um, but um, I took the P, PD, passed that, C, C, E, passed that. Uh, I failed the PDD around that C, E time, um, but then I went on, of course, to uh, pass PDD at the end and go home eat ice cream. So uh, I believe you're going to pass if you're putting your effort in, uh, getting the focus, and just really uh, preparing and so I'll, I'll include my link and some more resources about what I did to pass. Uh, if you're an architect and you found this video useful, uh, give it a like and subscribe to the I'm the Studio channel. Uh, these are some of the tips for industry as well as software and methods uh, for architecture design, rendering, and just doing great things in architecture. Uh, see you in the next tutorial.